Good morning, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. So today, first thing we're going to do is crack on with Lee's Cosworth engine. Let's get it finished. So you can see the bottom end is almost there. Guys, like I said on the last video, just waiting for the oil pump to turn up from Burton, um, and then we can get that on. So this is the cylinder head. We've cut all the seats now. Um, now these seats particularly, just the inlets at the moment we've done, obviously put new guides in, ream them. Um, these seats were not brilliant, so we've had to cut these down probably worst about 7,000, something like that. And that was this one here. So what I normally do with the Cosworths, um, because you haven't got much to play with on the back of the hydraulic, there isn't a great deal of give in the hydraulic lifter. I mean, the idea of the lifter is to take up the, any sort of clearance there, um, but you can get to a point if you, if you face the valve seats back too far, um, you can bottom out the hydraulic and what that'll do is open the valve and then you get a misfire. Um, so what I always do on this, as I say, the worst one is about 7 thou, at best are about 3 thou. Um, I always, when I put them in, usually they sit flush with the cylinder head. So I measure the depth of them um, and whatever the depth is, I'll take off the back of the stem. Um, so as I say, at worst they're 7, at best they're about 3 thou. So what I normally do is measure the depth from the cylinder head down to the valve. So what I normally do is measure from the face to the end of the valve. We zero that, then we come over to this machine. So first of all, this is obviously having faced the, the 45 degree angle on the face. So we do that first, then we measure the head from the head to the top of the valve. And then we take off here. So that'd be zero. I'm not gonna do this one because I've already done it. But what we do is we put it in we put it in this end here, we just nip that up, wind that back to the stop and then we push that valve onto the stone so it touches the stone, nip it up here and then we just go backwards and forwards on that stone, winding this in gradually, doing it a bit at a time and then we sort of measure it and when it's down, say for instance it's 3 thou lower than the head face, we just take 3 thou off here and then we know we're going to be back to normal on the hydraulic side. So I've done all them. Now what I'm going to do is turn the head around, ream the exhaust guides and do the same on that. Cut them, measure the valves and um, see if we have to take any off the stem on the back side. Right, so quickly before I get in amongst the exhaust, all the inlets are done now. And as you can see, the way we test those is we've got a vacuum tester here. So what this does is it's a tube here with various size pads um, that we put over the port. So you use a big enough pad to go over, to, over the port, obviously with the valves in. We turn this on and what it does is draw the air out of here. So if I put my thumb over there, you see that goes right through to the green. And what we're looking for is something that without the springs and without having to push the valves down, it goes up past the 400, ideally into the green. So if I put that pad on there, you see that going up to, up to the green as it sucks the air out. Um, if it doesn't go up there, what that means is it's sucking air past the valves and it's not sealing correct. You see all these now, no force on there, no springs, going right up to the green. Um, problem I had with this head, when we stripped it, um, what I normally do is cut the seats, um, then plonk the valves in and see what we had before, see whether the valves are right. Now, this cylinder, um, had no vacuum at all so I thought well it must be a bit of dirt on the seat so I've cleaned them all off um, obviously I've cut them um, and this was a valve that was in it you see I haven't faced it yet if I put this old valve in here press that down put the sucker on it nothing happens at all if I press the valve it's, it's you can hear it trying to um, so what I did then was put this valve into the valve head refacer, like so. Turn it on, and you can see that head wobbling about, so it's got a bent valve in it. So what you find is when it's a very slightly bent valve, it, with the spring on, and the spring, if the guides are worn and the spring is pulling the head into the seat, 
it may well have had probably compression, not as obviously nothing like it should have. So we've got a new valve here, all faced up. Pop that in. Vacuum tester on. And you see that goes straight into the green. So yeah, that's what you find guys. If it's a very slightly bent valve, so if it's been over revved at some point and it's just contacted with the piston, that's why I always put my big valve cutouts in there so that doesn't happen. Um, the spring will pull the valve into the seat so you do get compression, but eventually that valve being sort of bent back into shape every time, it could fatigue, drop the head off the, head off the valve and blow the engine up. So it's a good job we went through this head. Right, so here's the Cosworth now, got all the valve seats done, all the valves laid out. Um, we've just given it a very light lick over, see if it cleans or not. Um, but while that's doing, guys, we've just had the delivery from, the, from Burton Power. So what we've got in here, we've got a genuine Ford oil filter. They're the only ones I use on the Cosworths, which is ideal. This is all for, for Lee's engine that we're doing. Uh, the oil pump. This is a two wheel drive oil pump. So these are slightly, oops, sorry. These are sort of getting on half the price of the four wheel drives and the four wheel drives are a bit hard to come by at the moment. Uh, but I know that these ones from Burton are good. You've got to be a bit careful on some of, the, some of these pumps, the aftermarket ones on the quality. But what I always do, um, even if it's a brand new pump, take the top off make sure there's no flashing or anything from the casting inside and just make sure everything turns right um, and then put it all back together and prime it all up. So at least we've got the pump now, we can get all that on. Um, so I've ordered a few other bits. Obviously we've got the gaskets for Lee's engine here, but I've ordered a few other bits from Burton just to put in my stock. So here we've got the, the balls that go in the back of the block in the main oil gallery. So that is that ball down there, you see that? There we go. Um, so they just go in the back of the main oil gallery. Now at the front of the oil gallery, there's two core plugs. There's a large and a small. Um, I keep them in stock as well. Also, these are the oil gallery plugs that go in either side of the head. So there's four of these in a head, two at the back, two at the front. And these are a uh, BSPT, an eighth BSPT. Um, plug, so they're a slightly tapered plug, and we normally put those in with a bit of this Heldite. I've told you before, the Heldite is the joining compound that goes hard and it's great against sort of sealing oil. So stick those in our little spares drawers. These are my drawers for the Cosworth stuff, so I've got a load of spare gaskets and seals, etc., in there, loads of bits. Um, these are the core plugs that go in the other end of the block, so these go behind the jack shaft. You've got the small ones down there, the big ones there. Obviously we've got some spare um, oil pump bolts that bolt the pump to the block. Some circlips there, spare that we that come off the, um, the valve guides. I've told you we need to take the circlips off the old guys and put on the new ones. Um, we shall pop those in there. So that's some of our spares. We've got spare head bolts there. So obviously when I do the long studs, if I do six long studs, we need four head bolts on the outside so I normally if I buy a pack I put the spares in there and then I can just use them it saves me buying another set here we've got some spare um, auxiliary shaft retaining tapered screws so these are the ones that uh, well I can't show you now because it's behind there but there's a the jack shaft that goes in there there's like a, a fork that holds it in now these are the bolts that bolt it to the block so I'll just keep some of them spare just in case we ended up because they're a usually they're um, a Phillips screwdriver and the head gets all a bit mullered so these obviously are a hex so we just replace them if need be we'll stick them in there as well and then here we've got some more bolts I always don't matter what they're like because of the weird little um, female spline drive in there I always change these. I put two new ones in for the for the oil pump, so we'll stick them in there as well. Spare core plug sets, obviously core plugs for the engine. On the 200 blocks, we only need two of them, and it comes with an extra one and one for the back. So I normally just accumulate another set. And then finally, guys, we've got some more. We've got some of the 
the hex drives for the oil pumps so I always stick a new one of those in no matter what the old one's like and that is it and they sent us a new catalogue by the looks of it so yeah the next step guys we'll get that oil pump on to the pickup and prime it all up sort it all out and get that on the block get the sump on so we've done the first cut guys I literally only give it about a three thou cut but you can see around this area here which is number that's number three you can see there where the gasket has been sort of wearing into the head um, especially around this area here it was starting to blow a head gasket so I'll give this another three thou cut same heel up not great um, these water jackets got a little bit of corrosion around the edge but they're nowhere near the, the gasket line so we don't need to do any welding there um, the rest of the head looks pretty good to be honest so let's see what it cleans like with this three thou right so you can see we've got the oil pump apart now guys this is the new one so what we're looking for is obviously just make sure just visibly I know it's new but we just visibly have a look at all this make sure there's no flash in there on here we just make sure all that's good um, we want to inspect the top there now I've, basically what I've done is I've turned it around I've got I've stuck the allen key in which is the what is the drive for it I've put that in the bottom when it's all assembled turn it all around I just want to make sure on here that we've got no sort of scoring or anything um, now in here you want to be careful of the bottom because it's all been machined you want to make sure there's no flashing in here that's going to jam the thing up or make sure that there's no scoring on the bottom of here where you can where it's been rubbing against any flashing so it all looks pretty good we stick that in we've got a dot which goes upwards and the same on there look so we'll pop all this back together now um, now this is a high pressure pump and all that means on these Cosworths high pressure is in the back there where that core plug is behind there is a ball and a spring it just all it is is a, a stronger spring really and just holds a bit better oil pressure if we can I always buy the um, the high pressure pumps with the stronger spring and all that is is because we run a different oil to what they run originally especially on the tune stuff it just holds that bit oil pressure that bit more oil pressure when the oil's hot um, so what we'll do is we'll put all this together we'll tighten it all up and then we put the drive in the back and you can see down the hole there it's all turning make sure it's all turning nicely okay before we put any oil in there and then what we're going to do now that's all seems really good so we're going to put the oil pickup pipe on there with the new gasket um, put it on the engine and we'll prime it before we put the sump on so we'll put a load of oil down there and we'll turn the pump and get it all primed up right so we've got the pickup and the oil pump on the block now now i've said to you in a previous video when i'm doing these there's three things to look out for when you get these on now the first thing that's very important because these pumps have a crap design where there's two bolts at the back, not even central to hold the pump flat onto the block. And obviously these things don't run a gasket, so they're relying on the, the pump sitting dead flat on the, on the block, otherwise you can lose all pressure. Um, so if you look down, you can see the daylight there. Well, that bit there is slightly raised from the platform of the, the old pump. So you're expecting to see a bit of daylight there, but there, and round here you don't want to see any daylight so I'm convinced that that's flat what I normally do is put the you've got a eight mil bolt here that holds the pickup down I normally do that bolt down not not all the way and don't certainly don't do it tight until you do these obviously a bit of thread lock on all three so they don't shake loose um, the same on these bolts here for the pickup we've got the the oil pump gasket so first of all we want to make sure that's flat secondly you want to make sure that the pump is not skew if now there is a dowel in there that's in between the block and the pump to make sure it's central but you just want to make sure there's a gap there on the four wheel drives it runs a lot closer than that um, two wheel drives you're normally all right and then thirdly running the arp 2000 bolts which are taller than the standard you want to bring the crank round to the bolts just below the pickup pipe and make sure you've got a good mil or two mil of gap there on the four wheel drives they tend to sit a bit closer so what i have to do is put a little indent in the pipe there and just make sure you've got clearance um, so they're the only things to look out for guys now what we're going to do is just get the get the sump on there so next stage of the cosworth you can see we've got the tensioner on there 
albeit loosely. Um, we found TDC, so we've got our DTI gauge in the spark plug hole, and we found true TDC and set it with our marker, so we're right on TDC there. We've got the camshafts in, um, inlet and exhaust. You can see we haven't put the bearings in or the, the pulleys on yet. There's a reason for that, I'll show you in a second. Auxiliary shaft, when the, cam, uh, the crankshaft is on TDC, the auxiliary shaft times up with that arrow in the center of that half moon at the back there. And you can see that belt lines up nicely there. So um, obviously I've stripped these, these cams down. Um, what I'm gonna do is clean the bearings up. The bearings feel really good, so I'm just gonna clean them up and oil them up. Obviously new O-ring on there. Um, but one thing I did find when I took these pulleys off, and that's that the cam seals are meant to be flush with that housing. You can see they popped out. So they've been running like that, especially this one. This one is what they call on the piss. And if I take that out, you can see in that housing where that seal has been sitting. See it there? See where that seal has been sitting on the piss. So uh, it's probably been held in by the front pulley, but um, if that wasn't leaking, then it soon would have been absolutely hosing out oil. Um, so we're going to get new seals in there, clean all this up, put it back together. And then obviously, because we've got the vernier pulleys, we're going to be setting those verniers up the same way as we normally do. And then all we've got to do then, stick the rocker on and we're all done. So there we go, guys. The Cosworth is now all finished, all timed up on the verniers, etc. Um, rocker cover on. We've got loads of cam lube under there on the cams. So that is all ready for Lee to pick up on the Saturday. So guys, that's it for today's video. Until Friday's video, have a great evening. We'll see you then. Cheers, guys.